Hey everybody, it's Brian and Tobias Smolders with Remax Escarpment. Woo woo! With Mission 35 Mortgages on the Pig Podcast, the Platinum Investment Group. What's our goal? <laughs> to make you fucking wealthy. <laughs> Tons of money. That's what our goal is. Financial freedom and literacy for you. Yeah, that too. <laughs> all, for, all for free. Yes, totally. You know what? So thank you guys for tuning in and thank you guys for listening. And Tobias, totally right. We're all about getting you financially secure. So what are we talking about today? Uh, I think it's when to refinance. When so, to refinance. You know, your primary home or, you know, to get you into a rental or your, one of the rentals you already acquired yep. and uh, to get you another one. Totally. Yeah, it's a question we get asked a lot, when to take out money. Uh, easy answer, whenever someone gives you money. Whenever they will <laughs> give you money, yes. Yeah, okay, podcast over. Someone give you money, <laughs> is say yes. Your money, take it and run. Yeah, yeah. totally. But uh, the reality is, you know what, it's tougher to refinance now. There's more, uh, you can do it strategically, mm -hmm. I would say, especially if you're on your primary residence or, you know, getting to your first, second rental, you can actually do it strategically. So um, let's and talk about maybe... So you do it strategically so you can maximize what you're going to get out of it. Totally. So uh, we were talking beforehand about like sort of the top three ways yeah. that you can do that. So what would you say the number one way is, or number one time? is to refinance time yeah like uh season time sure yeah, yeah now time. i think now like yeah. the appraiser can only go back six months for your sure. uh uh comparables so you want to get a good bunch of comparables you can obviously watch the market and say oh a bunch of great houses similar to mine sold recently or have your realtor do that for you yep um but you know August, September, we've gone through the season of the spring market, which is traditionally the best in our area. Yep. And uh, sort of the summer's decent. Um, that's going to give you the best comps for that appraiser to do their job properly within guidelines that the bank gives them. Yeah, I think that's great because, yeah, yeah the higher the property comparables are, that means the higher your house will come in at, right? Yeah. And the higher your house comes in at, the more money you can get out of it. Totally. I think it's important to note, too, um, what is not included in an appraisal sometimes <laughs> because we get this a lot unfortunately private sales are not included in appraisal yes. comparables right so uh, you know if somebody down the street sold his house privately uh, the appraisal company will not use that as yep. a comparable if a house is listed for sale <laughs> it or that's not not a comparable or not closed sold. yeah or not or closed, closed yeah, right yeah, yeah. because and, and that's kind of a funny one right because uh -huh. Um, you know, you could have your neighbor may have sold their house for, you know, $700,000, but it hasn't closed yet. It's not a comparable until it sells. Yes. Right? Because apparently houses don't close. Sometimes. Yeah. Apparently. Not on my exactly. watch. Not okay. on my watch. Yeah. Not on my watch. <laughs> but so, so good to know, right? Um, so that's good time. Yeah. So I think, yeah, when you start yeah. to look at late summer, early fall, you've seen the big lift, great time to trigger an appraisal. Totally. So you get it. Yeah. And uh, I think when you are seeing that growth too, if you rent out. Yeah, that's true. You know? Yeah, totally. You got the house looking as good as it can. Yeah. As good as it's ever going to be, especially yeah. if you have kids or dogs. <laughs> <laughs> or hoarder tenants. Or yeah. hoarder tenants. Yes. Yeah. Or, or any tenants. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that comes down to that burr strategy, right? Totally. You know, buy buy, renovate, refinance, and rent. Rent, refinance, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Buy, renovate, rent, refinance, burn. Yeah. Like it's, you know. It's I think you should stuff. refinance before you rent because you want to be able to showcase the property. Yeah, and a lot of people do that, right? Mm -hmm. So really, I think that's a perfect opportunity. When the property looks its best, you will typically get a higher value for it than totally. if it's, you know, so a tenant's gone in there, beat the shit out of it, and then prior to renovating, you don't want to send the appraiser in. Yeah. You want to send the appraiser in when it looks amazing. That could yeah. be an, an extra 10, 20, 30 grand. Totally. And that tenant fills it with all their crap where yes. you could you could even stage it. We stage it for our uh, refinance. Do you? We did oh, at our house. We lived idea. there. We, we staged it. It looked, yeah. looked mint and we did really well. I was oh, happy awesome. with that. You're so a smart guy. Yeah. You're a smart it's guy. just like selling. You're selling your property to the bank saying it's this good. Lend me money based on how it is. And you know what? An extra ten grand, if you're refinancing eighty percent loan to value, if it's higher mm -hmm. by ten thousand bucks, it may not seem like a lot if it's five, six, seven, eight hundred thousand, but that's an extra eight grand in borrowing power, right? Totally. So every ten, if you're going eighty percent loan to value, which a lot of the companies will, every ten will get you eight. Like that can be a lot of money. That can be, you know, your next property. That can be the difference right there. So all yeah. those little things help. What was the last one too that we had? There was 
So there's seasonality, doing it now, reno, yeah. and then there was... Uh, I think, uh, you know, if you're vacant. Totally. You know, that's yeah. great. That's a great time. Yeah. We'll, we'll say vacant or to get a new rate. Those are both good. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think vacant is easier again too, and I think vacant and rental probably go hand in hand totally. as well too. Yeah. Right? You ever try to rental with tenants? <laughs> <laughs> they were complaining about the dust going yeah, in their know, eyes. Right? I'm yeah. like, stop sleeping then. I, um, I no. would not recommend, <laughs> I would not recommend renovating when you have tenants in the property, okay? Um, but no, definitely when it's vacant as well too. You said yeah. about a new rate, so. Yeah, if you want a new rate, I've got a good story. Currently, we have a, a property that's got um, a variable rate, but it's it's variable rates up right now. It's it's at three point eight five, and uh, I've had the property for a little bit. We're still a few years out from uh, renewal time, but the rates have come down quite significantly. This is a weird rate. time. Just on yeah. that, we're in August of two thousand nineteen, yeah, and your fixed rates are significantly cheaper than variable. It's almost the full percent. It's it's like a it's like they, a, and they just offered me. They're like, you could just do this. And it's like, like a oh. full moon. Like yeah. it's very weird. It's, it's a very unusual market yeah. to have that. Wait, so. so can we get it on record? Would you say that your recommendation right now is fixed rate? Yeah, yeah, I would say right now. We'll yeah. note this because every uh, week or two weeks, I get an email from Brian that says my recommendation for rate is the variable rate. It's well, let strong. me, let me, this, uh, is, this has been for like five years, the best option for sure. I think variable rate. Uh, but I will, now I will it's say very this. weird. That's why I wanted to ask. Uh, 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 <laughs> let me just uh, preface that please, kind of sir. <laughs> right? Financially speaking, if you're staying in the home or keeping it for five years, a hundred percent. The reason why I will always typically recommend variable this and this is a unique situation is because not three quarters of people break a fixed term Whoa. because of yeah 75 percent of people break it because of divorce job oh. loss job change refinance so three out of four people are breaking that fixed term and what ends up happening is you have a massive penalty on a variable, you got a three month interest penalty. Yeah. On a fixed, you don't. And, so, when, and when we say massive, what are we talking? So that people know. Uh, it depends, broke. right? So it's called an interest rate differential. Mm -hmm. So it could be in some cases, the difference in interest in what you would have paid. So you can be talking tens of thousands of dollars. I've seen ones in the $20,000 range, depending on the mortgage amount and the duration that's left on the mortgage. So, so yes, five year fix is awesome. <laughs> if you're gonna keep it. Totally. If you're gonna keep it. But I, I had to pay 15 grand when I broke my five year fixed. Uh, and it was not crazy early. It was like two, two and a half years early. Yeah. But the rates had come down quite significantly and the new product was gonna give me access to the money in the house. And I was like, oh my God, I wish I met Brian before I signed up for this. Yes. <laughs> So, and I think that's, you know, what else do you want to do? We talked about earlier. So when you're, you can refinance for rate and also for cash flow. Cash flow. Right? Yes. By like, uh, because Extend, number one. right? Yeah. Amortization. Totally. There we go. So is that what you're looking at on, yeah, on yours right now? You take it from right 20, now, yeah. 25 to 30 years. Because if you've had the house for five, six, seven years, mm -hmm. you want to put it back over 30 years if you can. Yes. Then interest is still tax deductible, right? So you're writing that off. And then you want to make sure that you're getting more cash flow every single month. The cash flow quadrant, yes. Robert Kiyosaki, right? Love, Robert. <laughs> what do you do with your extra cash flow, actually? Uh, with the cash flow, we typically bank it, sock it away. Yeah. Um, as long as there's no outstanding bad debt against the properties, like if we've done a reno and we put something on a credit card, that'll be first hit. Mm -hmm. um, but then we sock that away uh, to save for the next property, the gotcha. down payment. Uh, I always say the the first one was was hard. The second one, I think, was the hardest because I couldn't refinance the first house to buy it. Mm -hmm. And the third, fourth, and fifth bought themselves. Nice. That is actually amazing. Yeah. yeah. And, and it comes down to is like refinancing, it does get more difficult the more properties that you have. But definitely under those options, ask, ask, ask. Don't ever take, like one of my favorite sayings is don't take no for an answer until you give someone the opportunity to say yes. Okay? Ask your bank, ask your favorite mortgage broker, see if you can take money out of it. Because, Absolutely. and and we said at the beginning, never say no to money. Yeah. It's kind of joking about it, but yeah. serious because I've got an investor friend too. He's got, he's got Tobias property, <laughs> you know, like oodles of properties. And the last one that we were able to do for him, um, it was with the trust company, mm -hmm. rate was 4.99%. 
it was going to give him uh, extended amortization and give him 200,000 capital, like free capital. Wow. So he's like, yeah, absolutely. I'll take it. Like 200 grand would be grand. another, yeah. another house. Yeah. Right. E even if you're investing that and you make 10%, it's 20 grand a year. That's going to cover whatever you're paying. Totally. Right. Yeah. And, and $200,000, what do you got to, how much money do you have to make at your job to get $200,000? A ton. Four hundred thousand take home. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. After yeah. you pay our friends at the CRA, good guys, making uh, healthcare free. Good uh, guys. Good guys. Come on. I thought we said we weren't gonna lie on the podcast, Tobias. <laughs> Jeez. Um, we never know who's watching. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Just kidding, everybody. Um, uh, but no, it, that opens up a lot of doors and a lot of things. And you know what I will say about refinance too, because. Instead of selling, a refinance is always an awesome option, yeah. right? You know, the wealthiest clients that I get to see come across my desk are people that haven't sold real estate and just continue to refinance it, right? And they will refinance it to a point where the cash flow makes sense, yes. right? So you're not taking out, in some cases, as much as you can yes. as you get on in your investment career, but you're taking out enough to ensure that the payments are still made. Yes. Right, yep. so that the rent is covered from the payments. Yeah, and and that um, you get that money because you want that. You talked about when it's sitting in equity in the property, it's great you have it, but that's essentially worked capital. You got it's it. It's done. It's yeah. not working. It's not making you any money. And when you can pull that out, you revive those soldiers and put them back to work on something else. Yeah. And uh, there was a saying I heard recently. It's Americans. American saying, but you got to get the dead presidents working for you. Oh, I love it. <laughs> totally. Yeah, I agree. And you know what? You may not like, you may be in a situation where you don't, you've got one rental property and maybe you're only able to take out 40, 50 grand and it's not enough to buy the next property. Well, guess what? You can still take that money out because rates are <clears throat> cheap right now. You could still take that money out at maybe three or 4% and you could lend it. We won't talk too yeah, much about right. that. But, we got uh, a podcast about that, right? Oh, I'm sure we did. I'm sure we did. <laughs> we Scroll did. through there. It's in there yes. somewhere, right? But it is another way because you could take out money at three or four percent. Listen, if the banks can do it, why can't you? Totally. You can take money out at three, four percent, and then you can lend it out at eight, nine, or ten percent, and then basically that worked capital is working for you, and now it's starting to build up more money. Perfect. To get the next property again. Yeah, and then on that too, say you have. A, maybe you can't buy a house you, uh, with that money, but say you have a loan yeah. that's hampering you, car loan, truck yeah. loan, something like that. Uh, would you say it makes sense to pay that off instead of having a car loan to put you in a better position to buy something? I, I think so. For yeah. you know what? I think every situation's yeah. different. But, yeah. You know, it, you have options then. You totally do. You right? lend it. You minimize bad debt. You do whatever you want. Just don't buy go karts. That's uh, that's not, are fun. They're what are you talking about. They're fun, but that's you haven't been. We gotta go to Cart World. Man. That's crazy. <laughs> Cart World's amazing. That's not putting your capital to work. Yeah, totally. No, but I think definitely if you can if you can better your cash flow, just like you said, it, you got to do it because I think part of being financially secure is ensuring that you know what you you don't have more month left than money. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, like all of a sudden money runs out and you're like, shit, I got a week left in the month and I got yes. no money left. No, no rental payments. Hopefully no one's late. We got more. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully nothing second. goes wrong. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I think <laughs> refinancing for that type of cash flow, even if it is as simple as making your cash flow better. Yeah. Like I've seen clients that bought a property that were borderline cash flow negative. Yep. And you know what's gone up a little bit. Mortgage has gone down. They've refinanced over 30 years. Didn't take out a ton of money. But now they made their cash flow situation better on that property. It's great, great. Right? Place. So now it's breathing room, it's yeah. comfort there, you know. Especially a lot of people will buy, uh, we'll say, a more high-end property that's going to be more expensive to purchase. So it's going to be not in that cash flow position. Yep. And a lot of people get weary of that sort of product, but they're buying with uh, appreciation in mind and mortgage pay down. Mm -hmm. So that can sort of ease that pain once you've bought that property, you can say, okay, our goal is to extend this in a couple of years so that we can be, you know, not infusing 500 bucks into our uh, rental account every month to pay for this property. We can make it neutral or totally cash flow hundred bucks so that that property is a better position too. That's yep. a great idea. I think refinance is a great tool and I think it all becomes around your state of mind around debt. Debt's not bad. Debt's a good thing. 
The biggest businesses in the world have billions of dollars worth of debt, but it's working capital debt, yeah. right? So long as you're making money on that debt, it's good. The trip to Vegas, <laughs> unless it's an educational conference, yes. <laughs> is bad debt, right? Take out tons of good debt, refinancing, good debt. Awesome, so, man. I, I think we covered, uh, covered uh, refinance. If you have any questions on refinances, let us know. We want to help you. And if you want to just, if you're just itching to buy that next rental property, give this guy a show right here as well. Too. There we go. I'll hook you up. Awesome. Make this <laughs> fabulous day, guys. Thanks so much. That was awesome. Boom.